Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Today we have a spicy one that I found in the 5-0 League deck lists and I am absolutely here for this one. So when the One Ring first came out, I was quite interested in a few people who said why not try it with this little card, Mind Over Matter. So Mind Over Matter is discard a card you may tap or untap target artifact, creature or land. So we tap our One Ring and then we discard a card to untap it. Then we draw some more cards, and you see how this goes. We draw our entire deck, and then we can tap down all our opponent's stuff, and then put something big into play to win the game. Speaking of big things put into play to win the game, Omniscient Semrical is about as big as you can get. So that's what we're trying to do here. So we are a mono blue splash green just a little bit for our Omnitel deck list. So we are a show and tell deck. We can put in things like a Traxxer, but we're generally trying to put in the Emrakul off of Omniscience, because once we put Omniscience in, we can kind of do our thing, get our combo going or whatever. But rather than playing a bunch of cantrips, we basically said, we don't want these Brainstorms and Ponders here. We're playing a bunch of One Rings and Mind Over Matters, because One Ring, that's a card advantage engine that's just going to win you the game, right? If we draw a bunch of cards, we should be able to get there with this. And as soon as we find Mind Over Matter, that's like lights out. And if we find Show and Tell and something's cool, that's lights out too. And it just buys us an extra turn off the One Ring too. So lots of stuff to like there. And in order to force all this through, we've got a bunch of Veil of Summers and Force of Wills. We're just trying to stick the thing we're doing and make sure it's good enough. And then we've got a bunch of Fast Mana in Chrome Moxes and Lotus Petals alongside our Soul Lands. And we have some Lauren Reveals so our Soul Lands can go and find us some like islands or tropical islands, whatever we need at the time, to get going. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We're going pretty big and over the top of people. We've got some intuition that we can use to like find the other piece. So if we've got our omniscience, we can then go and find like a Traxxer, Emrakul, and the One Ring or something. And that should do a lot of work to get us towards winning, that sort of jazz. Or we can just go and find the show and tell if we've got something cool. We've got through Mind Over Matter. So again, we can just go and find the Mind Over Matter and win the game that way by drawing a whole bunch of cards. Orcish Bowmasters is in the format. For Veil of Summers should help that. We can just do that. They can have a, as big an Orcish Bowmaster token as they want if we're just going to be winning the game by going over the top of what our opponent's doing. We also have the the many mismatch One Ring arts here. I think we have the full four different ones, I think, maybe. Uh, actually, no. I swapped out the really ugly one. So we don't have the really hideous one to look at today. But even, <laughs> even so, we are trying to go big here. Cyborg-wise is relatively limited in the tools we have. If we're worried about our mana base getting attacked from like Wasteland, Tempo-y style decks, we've got some Carpet Flowers to help on that front. Extra mana when we're trying to cast things like the One Ring and Mind Never Matter are very important. Sometimes we're going to need to kill creatures, so Income to Dismember. Graphsticker's Cage against things like Reanimator decks alongside Green Sun Zenith, Natural Order style things. We've got some more counter spells that are good for protecting our own things, so Fluster Storm. If we're playing a spell, we'll leave a bit of mana open. If we don't have a veil, we can then have a fluster storm instead because we just have more of that sort of effect. And we got a little catch all in Echoing Truth. So this is about it. I'm not an expert on playing the old show and tell decks, and I have I've rarely played the mono blue ones. So I'm excited to try this one. I was really, really stoked to play Mind Over Matter the One Ring, and I just haven't got round to it in all this time it's been legal. So finally we're here playing a bit of Mind Over Matter One Ring, and I am absolutely looking forward to this one. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Remember to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And let's see if we can put our mind over matter. If you're looking to play Legacy on MTGO like me, why not try Card Hoarder? They're a rental service that I personally use and I found them better than other rental services that I've used in the past. So why not give them a try? All right, um, our hand allows us to put in a turn one Emrakul or yeah, turn one Emrakul where you save your tracks for the Force of Will here. All right, we'll keep this. I'm not one to shy away from a turn one, 15, 15, flying, protection, all that sort of jazz. Now, if this goes wrong, we're a little bit all in, but I think going all in on an error call on turn one with Force of Will backup before your opponent even gets something like a daze available to them is pretty tasty. All right, our opponent's mulliganed quite aggressively so far. Ancient Tomb, Lotus Petal. Let's... Cast a show and tell. I think it is better to put in the Emrakul rather than the Attractor because we want to hold up the Force of Will, especially since our opponent's mulligan quite a lot. They could be the sort of deck that can mess with what we're doing and just combo through it. So having a bit of protection in this Force of Will is good. Okay, our opponent is on the um, 
cascade deck, current uh, creative technique. Try and go this turn. We've got that covered with our force of will. Right, so the cascade once. They hit this Tibbot's trickery. We will counter spell Tibbot's trickery. And then we will Emrakul our opponent and take away their land. All right. So our opponent's deck is definitely one where something like a Fluster Storm feels useful. Um, the Veil of Summers do not seem like they're going to do anything here, so they can get out of here. How are we going to deal with our opponents? So, so the way Graphics Cage works, they don't cast the spells from Exile with Cascades. What they do is they go through their deck, find the card, and they're all exiled. Then they play it from Exile, so Graphics Cage doesn't work. Which means they're probably like just playing an Echoing Truth because it's better than a Veil of Summer. And at least the, the Echoing Truth gets us perhaps a bounce spell if they fizzle or whatever. But again, we're playing Echoing Truth because it's blue. And I think that's about where we're at here. This is quite a sort of skewed, polarized matchup. So we're just going to roll with it. Show and Tell can be a little bit scary against our opponent because they are an Emrakul deck. But we now know that. So we kind of just going to be playing the control game. We can also use Mind Over Matter to just keep them off of enough mana if we can draw some cards. So the One Ring Mind Over Matter, we can use that to slow them down for a couple of turns before we go off with it fully, if we need to. But we'll see. Depends what our hand looks like or whatever. Okay, we don't have the counter spell here. How fast can this hand be? One mana, two mana, three mana... So we would need a soul land, really, for this to pop. And I would quite like some counter magic. I think we need something else here. Um, okay, I'll take the one ring and counter spells, please. I think we're getting rid of the lotus petal here. We're just going to play our soul lands and our counter spells. And hopefully that'll be good. The one ring will eventually find us what we need to win. Card is good. Also seems like a lot of soul lands aren't going to be great for helping us cast the old Mind Over Matter, which is something to consider. So we need three blue sources to do so. I guess we can always show and tell in the Mind Over Matter. Alright, opponents, they multi five. Tinder farm. Mind Over Matter. Okay, so now we have double Force of Will available, and then we can just recoup the cards with the One Ring. And our opponent's not going to really deal us damage in small chunks. They're just going to either kill us or not. And they don't really get to do much in the way of meaningful sideboarding because of how their deck is constructed. Alright, let's just get the One Ring flowing. Alright, we'll get protection from everything until our next turn. Yes, I would like to draw a card, please. Another Mind Over Matter. That's not really the one, is it? But if we find a Show and Tell, then we can just go next turn. The Omniscience is worse than Mind Over Matter right now on this current board for us, which is not a thing you get to say very often. A defense grid. Um... We have to counter spell this given what's going on. We don't get to interact with our other force of will. Putting the defense grid in their deck though means that their cascades are going to be a lot worse. What have we got here, opponent? Three mana. A violent outburst. Right, what are they going to cascade into? Tibalt's trickery targeting violent outburst. We will say no to this one. Okay. That's something. Let's see if this one ring can do the business for us. An ancient tomb. That's not the one. Let's draw some more cards. Show and tell. Oh, we're actually going to get to do the thing here, aren't we? Oh, I'm pretty happy about how this is panning out. Show and tell. All right, our opponent's seen the writing on the wall there. Um, yeah, pretty cool. We got to do the mind over matter thing straight up. Pretty excited about that. All right, let's go to round two. We're cruising. All right, we have like half of what we want. They don't really have a way to find the other half. Like, are we supposed to keep this? We're on the play. Turn one might never matter, but that's not really going to get us anywhere. So, what are our draws we're looking for here? Um, Emrakul, four attracts are all good. Any of our four one rings, that's nine cards. Intuition, that's 13 cards. All right, I think we keep this one. It's got enough pieces. We can get through some hate as well. Like we've got the show and tell, like the backup show and tell that we can run into a counter spell. So we're gonna play out our Ottawara. I don't think we're playing the Chrome Mox. We could get punished if our opponent's got some kind of like Trinisphere on turn one type action, but we could get punished if we play it and they have something like a Prismatic ending or whatever. All right, 
A volcanic island. A lotus petal. It's not really the one we want here, is it? One, two, three, four, five. We could just play mind over matter. It's certainly an interesting proposition, isn't it? All right, let's... What are we putting in here? Is it the backup mind over matter? Or is it the backup show and tell? It's not an easy choice. I think it's the show and tell here. Wait a second. No, sorry. I completely tanked on our mana there. We need six mana, not five. They ignore me. An island cycle from Lauren Veal. So this suggests to me somewhere along the control spectrum, tropical island. Okay. Looking at like hot bands, perhaps. Elvish Spirit Guide. Okay, we're looking at rhinoceroses. Rhinocerai. Okay. This might be a tricky one because they tend to pack an awful lot of counter magic. Okay. That's 10 power. That's quite a lot of power. So we don't have to worry about days. There's only hard count spells here. Right, this can buy us some turns later on down the line if we need to, but it's not going to feel great tapping our opponent's rhinos down at the cost of a whole card. All right, we'll take the turn. Next turn we can tap one rhino down. But I'm feeling the loss of, like, cantrips and stuff here. Petty theft. Very rude. Okay. What is our plan now? Uh, we play Ancient Tomb, we die. All right, let's just scoot this one up. So... We've got some tools we're going to want here. So, Flusterstorm is pretty useful. Echoing Truth is useful for Rhinos. Carpet Flower is also useful. What is not useful here? Uh, the Veil of Summers are somewhat useful, but often Flusterstorm is going to do the same thing, but better. I think we're more about the Veil of Summers going to accommodate these. I don't think we can board out any of our mana here. Um... The carpets, obviously very good. Keep these in. Maybe we could board out some Lauren Reveals if we're boarding in carpets. Although getting the green mana might prove difficult without our Lauren Reveals. Yeah, I don't think we can board out these Lauren. Um, do we want these Force of Wills? Or are we just thinking that Flusterstorm is going to be better? Are we fully about that mind over matter life? Hmm. Maybe we can trim some other mana here. Some, maybe our Chrome Moxes go to get bring in the carpets. Maybe trim a mind over matter, omniscience, and an intuition. Something like that. Could keep in some veils, but maybe the veils are better than the forces. But it really depends what we're trying to accomplish here. So again, we've got one of these hands where we don't actually go anywhere. So I do think we're supposed to mulligan until we actually have a hand that goes somewhere. Okay, this hand does go somewhere. But it's slightly awkward getting there. So we keep Mox, City. We've got this Lorien revealed. I think we are ditching a Force of Will here. We just got to go go fast, I think, here. I don't think we're going to have much choice with our Force of Wills. I think the Force of Will is just going to pitch to our Chrome Mox to allow us to cycle this. So we pitch this. Cycle this. I think we're going to get to the Tropical Island. So we can play things like Carpet. And we want to get this down before our State of Traitors comes on. The plan is to play the One Ring. And that should hopefully give us enough juice to get this Mind Over Matter going. And then we can assemble that combo and win the game. Obviously our opponent's got a bunch of counter spells. They've also got some pretty aggressive threats too. So we could try for the City of Traitors into the One Ring now. I think that's acceptable given our opponent's counter magic isn't going to be things like Days. We're just going to have to play into it and hope I think here. Yeah. Like, we're not playing a cantrip deck, so we don't get to, like, improve our hand over the course of several turns. All right. We do not have the One Ring in play. Okay. The Wasteland. Probably hitting our Trop here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Another reason why it's important to go for things there, I think. A Traxxer Grand Unifier. All right. We're just going to hold up until we get ourselves a Show and Tell here. So our opponent can probably put some power into play this turn, I would imagine. Okay, it might be an RN step via an out violent outburst. Which is slightly better for us than them accelerating out a Shadow's Agent. Alright, they're going to do it in our upkeep. Oh, no, they're going to petty theft this. That's very rude. That's a very rude behaviour. Um, Alright, I guess we're just going to sit here with nothing going on. We can put an Attraxor underneath a Chrome Mox when the time comes. Having two Attraxors is unlikely to be useful. Although we can chain them under an Omniscience, but if we're putting an Omniscience into play, then... 
They're probably already having a good time. Shadow's Agent, this is going to get them 10 power unless they do... Um, if they board it into the bribery one. They have not. Okay, that's good news. Because they could just cast our Emrakul, couldn't they? Or get our Emrakul out of our deck. That would be bad for us. Show and tell, please. It is a show and tell. Okay, I'll get an attraction into play. That's pretty good. All right. What do we have here? Uh, nothing very useful, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, do you want something like a City of Traitors here? Rather than an island? I think that's probably better for the best. Then we have an, inch we have an artifact here. We have an enchantment. And then we have either an Emrakul or an Attractor. We already have an Attractor in hand, so I'm going to take this Emrakul and say done. Not not actually a particularly amazing hit there. But we have an Attractor in play. And if our opponent can't deal with it, that puts us ahead. All right, they, they can't deal with it. Good to know. So now they're going to board in that stupid little bribery type spell, aren't they? So I don't think we... Because they're now they've seen that we've got some big scary monsters. I think we're going to want these veils in. Um, I think rather than trying to fight over rhinos, I think we're just supposed to fight with veils here. If we think they're bringing in the bribery with suspense spell. And then what do we... Oh, that, that mox felt very awkward, didn't it? Right, let's get rid of this mox. Alright, let's try that. Um, okay, I will keep this hand. It does stuff. There is a volcanic island. There is an elvish spirit guide. There is another elvish spirit guide. Here is a shadow's agent. Are they going to play into that bribery spell this time? Inevitable betrayal, that's what it's called. Uh, I think we'll get rid of this attractor. We're trying to win with the one ring combo here. All right. We managed to not lose the first hurdle. That's exciting. Um, we only have three mana if we put the carpet in. Do we want the carpet now? It can just get bounced. We can play it next turn and then just do it second main. I think that's better. And then we get to play the one ring. But if our opponent has another bribery, they're just going to get Emrakul out of our deck. And that's going to make me sad. Okay. Force of Will. Not a terrible card to have here. Alright, let's try for the one ring. Okay, we're in. Let's draw a card. It's an island. Okay, that's interesting. I don't think we're playing out the carpet flowers. Because if we crack the lotus petal for it, it's the same if we do it now or later. So we don't have all the blue we need. But if our opponent fetches another island, then that gives us two mana. Three mana. Four, five. So we have the, the right number of mana. We don't have the right color. Uh, yeah. All right, so they're attacking for two. That doesn't do anything because of the one ring unless they've got stomp or something random in their deck. Opponent's got three cards and they're representing force of negation over there. All right. The one ring is untapped. Attraxa. I would like to draw some cards, please. Always feels like a good thing to be doing. A violent outburst, you say. I will be putting this Force of Will on the stack, pitching our Atraxa. All right. An Omniscience and the One Ring. Do you want another copy of the One Ring? I don't know. Let's play Carpet Flowers. That's two blue mana. This is three blue mana, so it's not enough. So we'll take... Some damages here. Is it import more important to get this blue? I think this blue is probably more important for us right now. Right, we take two life to play the one ring, but we take two life to play the one ring, so it doesn't really matter either way. That makes If we play this one ring out and just let it die, it's better versus um, the... Actually, we don't need to take the life, actually, do we? We can just go to our next main phase and get the blue mana here, yeah. So get blue mana. One, two, three. So not quite enough for this. We can cast this. Um, we'll keep the old one because we want all those counters. We just want protection for a turn in case I have something like Minsk and Boo. Do I want this land in play? I think so because it means that we're way closer to playing Mind Over Matter. All right. Somehow we're muddling through. But what is this going to be? A Shardless Agent. We do not lose to an Emrakul here. Well, we might lose to an Emrakul. All right. They don't have any more hits left. That's pretty exciting. Not for them, obviously. But if we can find a blue source, we can play Mind Over Matter and win the game here. Our opponent's only got one card in hand. 
Right, there is a blue source. So, yes, I would like some blue mana, please. Let's tap this as well. Oh, many, many tools overfloweth here. Let's cast Mind Over Matter. Right, let's untap the One Ring. I will discard an Omniscience. All right. A second Mind Over Matter win. Uh, yeah, I'm having a great time. Let's go to round three. Round three, I don't think this is a keeper. I think we need to have a game plan here instead of just let's hope to draw the thing because we don't have the cantrips to get us there. Um, Omniscience, One Ring, Mind Over Matter though. I will take this. I think the Omniscience goes back here. Um, yeah. I think Veil of Summer is individually a more powerful card even though it doesn't go under Chrome Mox very well. Exploration. Okay, so we're going to get Wastelanded in the heart and that's going to make me sad. All right, they've got another Saga up and running. Pithy Needle. Good luck. If they name Mind Over Matter here, then uh, fair play to our opponent. But seems very unlikely. A Wasteland. Oh, they've named Wasteland. That's good news for us. All right. I'll take that. Maybe they're like a weird like Turbodex build. Or their hand just is very reliant on this as a Saga. So if we play out this Tropical Island... We can hold up a Veil of Summer, which is unlikely to be relevant. But we do have a turn two one ring, which can hopefully feed into a Mind Over Matter kill. And this Pither Needle is not on the one ring, so that's pretty tasty. I doubt we're actually going to cast this Veil of Summer. I don't really want to put it under the Chromox either. I kind of wish I had the Omniscience to put under the Chromox now. But I think in the blind we need to... Ooh. Thespian Stage. A Bajuka Bog. We're going to get squiddly diddly from the old dark depths here so our opponent would need to have two cards to get this to kill us this turn a force of will interesting i think we just want to get them the the one ring flowing the problem is if our opponent has a haywire might that's going to suck um but i don't think we can all right i think we're going to chrome ox and we need to imprint print a blue card so i'm going to imprint this force of will and we're just going to get the one ring down because we need lots of blue pips for our Mind Over Matter. Alright. And a track, so that's not the one. We need to come up with two more blue pips next turn. So the other option there was to hold back a turn and try and cast a one in the turn after. Because I don't think our opponent's going to make a 20 right now. The crop rotation though. A Yavimaya. Have they got another crop rotation? They do. So they are making a 2020. Alright. Oh no, they're just making a construct. How many go in there? Alright, the saga. Hopefully they don't have a second pit of needle. That would be an awkward one for us. And hopefully they don't have the haywire might either. I imagine they will from the sideboard, but I'm not sure if they're going to have it in the main deck. If they're mono green, then they might do. If they're the green white, they probably don't. Expedition map. Okay. That's a 2020 in our near future. What I will say is mine never matters pretty good against the old 2020, but. If we have Mind Over Matter, we just win the game anyway. So, there is that. Hopefully we've still got another turn before the 2020 comes down. An intuition. Um, Alright, I think we need to draw some cards first. Okay, that's a pretty good one. So, if we cast Intuition, then we cast Show and Tell, we should just win the game. I believe that works. Uh, let's tag our opponent here. Alright, I would like to put three show and tells on my hand, please. I'd like to cast this show and tell. Put in Mind Over Matter. And we now we get to have a glorious fun time. Let's untap the one ring. Let's draw some more cards. Let's untap the one ring. Draw some more cards. We got some fast mana. We've got some intuitions. We got some stuff here. Uh Emrakul, that's probably not the one we want right now. Uh, I'll discard this Emrakul and shuffle it back in so that we're more likely to draw these show and tells. So let's put in the Omniscience. And um, we can obviously draw our entire deck here. Just get rid of the land. We can also pitch a bunch of stuff to untap our lands as well. Um, right, let's untap this Ancient Tomb. Let's discard this Ottawara. 
Let's untap this. I'll discard Mode of Summer. Let's cast an Intuition here. Actually, no, we don't need to. We've got the Show and Tell already. Too many cards in hand. Not a bad problem to have. Let's put this in. Right, let's just cast... Oh, let's cast this without paying its mana. Just to make sure we have protection in case something goes wrong. Alright, our opponent's had enough. Uh, yeah. This, this deck feels pretty good. Um, okay, so our opponent's going to be trying to blow up a bunch of our stuff here. And... They might be doing some sphere types things here. So these are cards that have some text. Veil of Summer does nothing in this matchup. So that can go out. So we are getting probably the Echoing Truce in there. So we don't die to their big Merit Lage. And then we probably just take one Fluster Storm. It's fine. But I don't think anything else really helps us here. Graph Digger's Cage isn't going to stop them dredging life from the loam. So I think this is where we're at. So we need to make sure we don't die to our mana base. But this Mind Over Matter plan feels really strong. And because it's all instant speed, when you start doing the untaps, there's not really an interrupt once it's on the board. You just kind of do your thing. If you've got more than one card in hand, then that's more than one untap. So you can always untap in response and just keep going. So, yeah. So far, so good. We can show and tell a Traxxer. That's not actually that good. But it's... Pretty reasonable still. And our opponent hasn't... Well, I guess they've seen that we have play Emrakuls and things. They're going to have an idea about Show and Tell being in our deck. But unless they play a turn one sphere, then they're unlikely to interfere with what we're doing. That's not going to cast a sphere here. I do like having access to this for next turn. Let's just Show and Tell, get an Attraxer. Hopefully that's going to carry us. So Maze of Ith is a card our opponent can have. Caracas, also pretty good. The Wasteland isn't the worst. Like, it's obviously going to hit us, but it's better than something like uh, Maze or Caracas. Uh, they're crop rotating right now for the Caracas, I think. Unless they're just going to go make a beeline for the combo. Yeah, they're going to the Caracas. That's fine. Okay. There is one enchantment in here. And it's an Omniscience. There's a Lorien Revealed. And then we get to keep a land. What land would I like? So our opponent's gotten rid of a Wasteland. Uh, we already have a blue source here. We're kind of just looking for... I guess we need a second blue source if we want to cast this... Um, attractor any time. I'm going to take an island here. That's not a great hit, to be perfectly honest. So they can bounce the attractor and that will force us to discard. So we probably do discard the attractor Because we have a spare attractor. Our opponent obviously doesn't know that. Right, I probably didn't have any plays there. Interesting. A show and tell. Are we just going again here? I think so. Let's cast show and tell. Put in the omniscience. That should be difficult for our opponent to answer. This isn't really one they want to bounce. That's for sure. Uh, I would like the one ring as my artifact. I will take Traxxer as my creature. Force of Will as my instant. And Lauren Veal as my sorcery. And we still get land as well. Sure. That feels pretty good. All right, let's draw some more cards with this Lauren Revealed. Um, let's draw some more cards with this Lauren Revealed. Um, let's cast out paying its mana cost. This game is over. I believe. Yep. Wow, we are cruising with a really quick 3-0 so far. Um, yeah. Uh, flabbergasted by how this deck, which... Didn't have any of its cantrips and stuff is getting there. Now, we did get lucky to draw the show and tell. But we did put an Attraxxer in to dig through 10 of our deck. So it's not like we were just completely drawn blind. We did put, like, a whole bunch of cards that weren't show and tell to the back. And uh, the One Ring was still a pretty reasonable draw there, too. But, yeah, with 3-0, let's go to round 4. Um, yeah, putting an Attraxxer in on turn 2 is pretty good. I'll keep this. And we also have a pretty sweet follow-up of the One Ring. So let's just play an innocent basic island. Nobody's scared of a basic island, surely. An Urza Saga. Okay. What flavor of Urza Saga are we looking at? Mox Opal. Are we Saga Storm? Or are we... Okay, this means we're more likely to be like an 8-cast patchwork deck. Because Saga Lantern isn't usually in the 
Saga Storm decks. Okay. Um, we jamming. You got Force of Will over there, opponent? Or are we just free rolling? Oh, we're just free rolling. Orcish Bowmasters. Sure. Let's cast a free Atraxa. Okay. I'll take... Um, what do we even want here? Show and tell isn't necessary when we have this. We'll take Lauren Revealed. We'll take an Ottawara. We'll take a Force of Will. Alright, we'll cast this without paying his mana cost. Give ourselves some protection. I would like to draw three cards, please. These cannot ping us because of the One Ring. Oh, are they really going to ping the Atraxa? Alright, I will cast a free Veil of Summer. Their pings do nothing. Let's draw three more cards. Well, well, well. If it isn't my little friend Emrakul. I don't really know what our opponent's deck is now they've played the Orcish Bowmasters, but uh Okay. Yep, you can stack your pings here. Let's cast a free Emrakul. That's probably the concession right there. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so there's a saga. Mox Opal, Soul Guide Lantern. That's a tough one to puzzle through, I think. I think we want the Veil of Summers in for this. And then, I'm not sure. Like, there's an argument for having some Echoing Truths, but I think my opponent might be on, like, the um, the Orcish Combo Masters deck that I that I think I was the person who built it a long time ago. Uh, obviously, it's a pretty obvious deck, and a lot of people have tried it. Um, and that's just, like, Echo of Eons in, like, a Saga, Sto uh, like Saga Storm package, more or less, um, but with Bowmasters. They might have Shouldered as well, which is something we can bounce, because Shouldered is going to be hard with the life loss. Do we want Dismembers to deal with that? I don't think so. I think we just go back in with the with the same 60 here. We're flexible. This is unfortunately not the one. I imagine our opponent's probably got Thought Seizers, at least after board. That's Mulligan. It's something, isn't it? I think we get rid of a second Chrome Mox here. Like, it's a weird one. Okay. Maybe they're just like... Eight cast splashing for up the beanstalk. But with there's a saga. Alright, I, I officially have no idea what our opponent's deck is. Bunch of baubles. Cracking baubles. What is going on over there? So I'm gonna play this chrome mox out. I'm going to imprint a tracker, I think, here. Let's go all of our colours. And I'm gonna cycle this for I guess it's a trop. Although if we get an island we're less cold to wasteland, sure, I'll get an island. I'll play this island out. Um, am I worried about them removing our things, or am I worried about them discarding us? I think I'm going to leave this Lotus Petal in hand for now. Don't let him see quite how much we can do. And then hopefully we can find a land. Oh, no. That's not my friend. You got green source there, opponent? No green source. All right. Now is the time. All right. Lotus Petal plus Lotus Petal. Let's cast the One Ring. Now, yes, this can get blown up. And it is quite a large investment of resources. But if it sticks, then we should be golden. Our opponent's got five spells in hand. So, all right, here is the cantripping force of will. All right, that's probably the beginning of our slippery downfall here. At least I'm getting to see more of our opponent's deck, although I'm now none the wiser because Ancient Tomb as well in their bug deck. Chalice of Void for one. What is in our opponent's deck? I can't fathom this. Has somebody, like, brewed something recently I'm not aware of? What is going on? So we don't have anything that plays in the Chalice of the Void here. Uh, I guess if I play this Lotus Petal out, we are exposing ourselves a little bit to Haywire Might. We don't want to get hit by a Chalice on zero. Don't find a green source, please, opponent. All right. No pre-combat green source. Okay, four cards in our opponent's hand. Um... Like we could show and tell in the One Ring. I don't hate that. A little bit worried about what our opponent could have. But if they can't spell this, they're not counting spell in the One Ring. All right, they had counter spells. So if we can find a Soul Land, of which we run a bunch, like seven in our deck, then we can put this One Ring on the stack. So we didn't really lose anything from the One Ring because we actually do intend to cast the spells in our hand. So the, the show and tell didn't matter too much. Alright, and islands. We just need any mana source, and then we can play the One Ring. 
and hope that our opponent doesn't find their great source before they get us. But there are... Uh, now there's a Saga deck. And an Ancient Tomb deck. And an Up the Beanstalk deck. And a Chalice deck. Like, I am quite perplexed. Atraxa, you are not what we're looking for. Our opponent, if they find a green source, they might hit our Chromox, which means we can just draw a Soul Land and play our One Ring. Five mana. Thought Monitor. That makes sense, given up the Beanstalk. I guess. I guess we did play something a little bit like this quite a while ago on the channel. With like a bunch of affinity guys and up the beanstalk. But we were more combo -y with with... Um, what's it called? Glimpse of nature type jazz. jazz but uh, interesting. An intuition. Alright, I guess we cast that in our opponent's turn. Play around force of uh, negation. What do we get though? That's the question. Do we just get a soul land and just try and power out the one ring? My opponent's got a lot of mana and a lot of cards there. Sojourner's champ companion. Okay. Yeah, I think we just have to get a land and put the one ring into play and try and get the game won with that. Yep. Sojourner's companion again. So this is, what, 8, 9, 10, 11 power. And we take 3 this turn. Emery. That's pretty good. That's... 12 power and we take 3. So this is a lethal attack across 2 turns. So we need to hit well here. Alright. Can we intuition? We can. Okay, I'll get a City of Traitors I think here. Uh, we could get a Show and Tell and just put in the Atraxa. Is that good enough? No, I think we just want the City of Traitors here. So we'll highlight all of these. Our opponent gives us 1 City. We cast the 1 Ring. That buys us a turn as well. Another intuition. That's certainly not useless down the road. I would like protection. They were F6 to their end, of end step, so maybe they'll be F6 now. Unless it's the force of negation they specifically have. Okay, we're in with the one ring. I would like to draw a card, please. A Lorien revealed. Okay, I would like to island cycle this. We're so close. We are so close. I can feel it. All right, here is the island we want for next turn. If I don't wasteland us and don't have any counter spells, we do get to win the game next turn. There's a saga. Okay, that does not stop what we're doing. It's not a green source. Don't play a mox, please. Oh, they have a lotus petal, don't they, in the thing? Oh, they're going to get rid of the one ring here, aren't they? Oh, no. It's all gone wrong. Maybe we're supposed to get a show and tell. Oh, wow. They didn't... They didn't haywire my R one ring. Because it's that exile, so it can actually kill the one ring. Oh, wow. Okay. This is interesting. Our first life total is not the highest thing. They are just drawing a whole bunch of cards here, though. They're just going to overrun us with, like, everything. Like, we might just not be able to get through a field of counter spells. But they have already burned a lot. There's three there. Four. They've gone through four of their counter spells, which is possibly half of them, but they are halfway through their deck, so... All right. All right, the One Ring, you've got to do some work for us. Help us out. Ah, Force of Will. That's certainly a useful one. What is this? A Hole Breacher. I would like to say no to Hole Breachers in my area. You got some more cards there, opponent. Okay, okay, okay. Let's play some out of this. Play this island. Mind over matter. Are we in? Oh, we're pod racing. Excellent. Right, let's untap this one ring. Let's draw some cards with the one ring. Let's untap this one ring. And uh, we'll get rid of omniscience, I think it's fine. Let's tap the one ring. Uh, let's untap the one ring. We'll discard this ancient tomb. Let's tap the one ring. You've seen this song and dance. All right, we have a lot of things here. Um, let's just keep making sure we have all the things. Ron drops don't work into Chalice, so we'll just keep going this way. Alright. Um, I guess we'll start untapping our lands. Alright. And one more. And I will cast this show and tell. We've got Force of Wills. A Fluster Storm. How many show and tells do we have? Plenty. All right, this is fine. 
Sure, you can you can have this. We'll just cast another show and tell. They can't surgical extract it using surgical extraction because they don't have the. I guess we could have also just untapped and then paid for these lesser storms, but it doesn't matter. Right, let's untap some stuff again. Cast show and tell. I'll put this on omniscience. Let's cast an attractor. There's an emerald. Um, I'll take this Ottawara, this One Ring, this Intuition, this Mind Over Matter, many things. All right, let's cast this for free. All right, our opponent's had enough. And we are 4-0 in no time at all. Uh, this, this deck might be the real deal. Like, we've got somewhat fortunate, but like, what we're doing is certainly powerful. All right, let's go to the trophy match. Welcome to the trophy round. Uh, this hand only requires us to find... Well, we need something to put in with our... We need something to do with our omniscience. But I guess we have the intuition, actually, don't we? Yeah? No, this hand is just rolled up if we find a blue source. I will keep this to try and draw a blue source. It's the most abundant thing we have in our deck. We can lead off on City of Traitors. If they wasteland it, it's not the end of the world because we do have another soul land. Right, our opponent usually likes Delverish strategies, if I remember rightly. Or are they... No. I can't remember now. I think it's so many people. Marsh Flats. Okay, I'm I'm getting re vibes right now. Lotus Petal, okay, maybe it's full-on reanimator vibes. Dark Ritual. Okay. Doomsday. Say no to Doomsday. We'll pitch this show and tell. All right, let's hope that our opponent can't rebuild from there. An Attraxa. Um, there's no point playing out the City of Traitors for now. Uh, although, if we draw the One Ring, if we play out the City of Traitors and we draw the One Ring, then we can play it out anyway. If we draw a land, no, I think we just... Um, our opponent's not going to have Wastelands in their Doomsday deck. Now, if they do have a Wasteland in their Doomsday deck, fair play to them, they've got me. Under City Sewers. Sure. Scrapping a personal tutor. Oh, they had a personal tutor as well. Okay, so Doomsday is going to be on top of their library. Understood. We need a little help here. The One Ring, you say. Like, it's a pretty good Magic the Gathering card. So let's have it. Three cards left in our opponent's hand. Alright, we're just in. A Lotus Petal. So next turn, we should be able to win the game. We just need our opponent to do a pass to turn line with their Doomsday and not kill us immediately. Dark Ritual. Doomsday. Two cards left in their hand. They're keeping up some mana, so this could be a problem. Because their I win the game ignores our we can't take damage. Okay, they've made this pile very quickly. Oh wow, they passed in turn. Oh wow. Maybe we get to win the live the dream. Let's draw some extra cards. I like drawing cards. It's a good habit to have. Right, let's play this Tropical Island. Let's cast a show and tell. I would like an Omniscience, please. I would like to cast this Attractor without paying its mana cost. Uh, these aren't an Emrakul, but there's a Mind Over Matter. That does win us the game. Attractor. Chrome Mox is fine. Intuition Island. Let's just cast this one. This might be the quickest way to get to an Emrakul. That's not an Emrakul, is it? Um, all right, Force of Will. It's not really going to help us here, but we'll take the card draw. And sure, we'll just take whatever, just to get him out of the deck and into our hand. All right, I'd like to cast on, cast Lauren Revealed with Omniscience. Cast on Revealed with Omniscience. Uh, let's cast another Attractor. We must be getting towards the old Emrakul by now. Uh, still no Emrakul. All right, we'll take another Attractor. Take these cards out of our deck, whatever, doesn't matter. And all these cards go all the way over here. Let's just cast this one. There's the Emrakul. Alright, I've probably seen a lot of our deck, but I don't think that matters here. Okay, so I would like to have access to some fluster storms in this mid. I don't think the Veil of Summers are quite where I want to be. They help us force through our thing, but I think we might be up against it from our opponent a little bit. And I think that's probably all the sideboarding we're doing here. Carpet Flowers can give us one or two mana. Um, but this game is kind of going to be over before Carpet necessarily gets to do its thing. 
We could replace a Chrome Mox for a carpet. But being able to just do our thing on turn one is probably where we want to be here. Echoing Truth is something we could have if we're worried about the Shouldred. But I think we're just going to ball him like this and uh, see if we can snatch a trophy. we got two bikes at the Cherry now because we're one up. Uh, Flutterstorm, the One Ring, and nothing else. This is quite slow. Um, our opponent has Mulligan. I'm going to Mulligan too. Um, this would be a very silly hand to keep. This is the let's hope that we stop our opponent from winning the game. And maybe get around to winning on our own at some point. Like what, what are we looking for? Like Lotus Petal, Soul Land, Show and Tell, something. Something good to put in with the Show and Tell. Is that better than having access to Flusterstorm, Force of Will, Blue card? But then what, how are we winning the game here? I guess we just want to Show and Tell in an Emerald at some point is probably the best way. Can we just bin back these two? Or we keep the Omniscience? This is a very weird keep if I do keep it. I think I will keep it, but I'm not happy about it. I think just putting an Emrakul in is likely to be enough. So I think we are getting rid of... Oh, wait, we only have to get rid of one card here, don't we? Yes, we just get rid of the Mind Over Matter. All right, that's excellent. We can just... Yeah, so if we even find a Show and Tell and a Soul Land and some other stuff, then we can maybe get there. I think we're going to get Thought Seized. There it is. Our opponent gets to see our hand, which is... Uh, <laughs> A little bit embarrassing, but we have the things we need. We just need some land. Well, we, we need to show and tell, but Intuition can find it. We're just looking for mana with this hand, and that's the most abundant thing in our deck. So I don't think it's a completely loose one on the draw. All right, they took our mana source. This is where we just top deck a land straight up. We did top deck a land. It's not the one we wanted, but I'll take it. A ponder, sure. So if we can find an island... Then we can put Intuition on the stack, get ourselves some Show and Tells, Show and Tell Omniscience and Emrakul win the game. That's a pretty good line. It does require us to draw the land. Oh, he's so good at this game sometimes, right? Okay. Better lucky than good sometimes. But like I said, we kept this hand because it interacts with our opponent a lot. And we can just win the game with it if we draw some lands. And lands are the easiest thing to draw rather than trying to, without cantrips, find our big pieces. So our intuition might not resolve here. Our opponent could have a... Um, I was going to say, our opponent could have the Veil of Summer here, because this does target. I think, oh, are we just going to get Surge Extracted here? That would be very mean. There's an Undercity Sewers. Land would obviously be great here. Not a land. Um, I think I'm down for forcing our opponent to answer our spell here. This resolves, we win the game. Edge of Autumn being sacrificed. All right, we're putting in on instance. Oh, wow. We just absolutely blazed through that league. That is incredible. Um, Wowzers, trousers. Yeah, a pretty pretty solid win there. Obviously, the trophy is nice to have. Let's have a quick look at our matches here. 2-0, 2-0, 2-1, 2-0. 2-0. So we only dropped one game the entire league. That is crazy. Uh... Yeah, really strong stuff. So, uh, let's talk about this deck then. Well, obviously scoreboard is great, right? Trophy is what you want. We only dropped one game. But let's get into the nitty gritty of this deck. So, we didn't get wastelanded very much this league. And that's certainly a possibility with four trops, a bunch of soul lands, a bunch of Ottawaras, and just these three islands to sort of hinge on. So that's certainly a thing that could have happened. <clears throat> we didn't really get our stuff counterspelled very much. Like, we had one round where we got counterspelled. But we did just work through it because the one ring is excellent. So, yeah, this seems this does seem like where you want to be. Like I think show and tell into like these things. Oh, let's, actually, let's put them all in the column that makes sense. All right, so show and telling in any of these things is a pretty solid way to win a game of Magic the Gathering. And we're just trying to do that quickly. But then instead of having like cantrips and stuff to find these. We've just said, okay, let's just stick four one ring in the deck. We've got a bunch of soul lands anyway. The one ring just wins you the game after a few turns anyway, because it's way better at finding things than ponder. So ponder, you know, you select for three, but over the course of two turns, the one ring's already drawn you three cards, and then you kind of just snowball out. 
And the Mind Over Matter wandering plan was a really effective way of getting around some things that might have jammed us up a bit. Like, we were against the lands player where they could just, you know, bounce our guys or whatever. But we didn't care about that. We just could just draw our whole deck. And the protection from the wandering to buy another turn in a combat of this also seems excellent. We didn't really get to utilize the Veil of Summers that much, but I totally understand why they're in here. And in a format full of, like, Scam and that sort of thing, you're, and, you know, Delver, whatever, I think Veil of Summers is going to be useful. I think my reservations about this deck is, in theory, a Wasteland plus Thoughtseize deck can do an awful lot of work against us. Obviously, that's why we're running four Veil of Summers. We need to protect ourselves from that. But... Like, Wastelands can keep us off of our key spells. And the Thought Seizes and things can, you know, take the the B to our A for our combo, which gives us a lot of trouble. But the fact is, our deck is, like, mostly juiced, right? So, what well, we've got 13 cards here and 11 here. So, this is 26 cards. I guess Mind Over Matter on its own isn't necessarily juice, but it can be. But that's still, what, 21 cards... So more than a third of our deck that is just like raw power. You know, the sort of things that are going to win us the game in theory. You know, we need to be drawing these cards. But that's a lot of cards to draw from. Now, what I will note is the show and tells without these cards aren't great. But we did show and tell in a one ring and that was fine in that matchup. And we did win it. And we did show and tell in a mind of matter and it didn't necessarily go so well for us. But as A plus B combos go, this one felt pretty good. I think... Casting the One Ring is often going to be better than casting Sneak Attack, as a general rule. Like, the One Ring is just such a good card. It just buys you a lot of time, and this is definitely a shell where it felt good in. But obviously, low sample size. You know, if you play enough decks enough times, you'll get leagues with them. You know, as long as you're doing something legacy power level-wise, you will eventually get a trophy if you just keep jamming the same list. Um, obviously, we got it on our first try, which uh, is not nothing. What we're doing is obviously clearly powerful, but... We did get fortunate in some of our matchups and some of our draws, like that one where we just drew the show and tell after our first show and tell got dealt with. That was pretty great. So Fortune definitely smiled on us a bit today. I think you could probably tweak the sideboard a little bit, but I would have to go into like in-depth looking at all the matchups and see what we need, what we don't need, and then sort of tinker with it that way. But, you know, I'm not an expert with these sorts of decks, so I'm not the person to do that tinkering. But what I will say is this deck is inherently powerful. We are doing something here that says we get to win the game. And at the moment in Legacy, it's kind of gravitating into like this sort of pseudo mid rangey sort of thing. You know, we're seeing a lot of Delver, Cradle Control, like the, the scam style decks. And some people are saving Force of Wills. And people are, you know, skimping a little bit on their main deck counter magic which is exactly the right time to be playing a combo deck like this. Now, obviously, things can just swing back again just as quick, and we're about to get a new set soon. I'm not sure when the release date of the Cowboy set is. Um, Outlaws Thunder Junction, I think it's called. So when that comes out, things are obviously going to change a fair bit because I think there's some pretty interesting cards in there which uh, are going to see some legacy play, and I'm going to try and do a video on that one for you as well on like cards that I think to watch out for from that set. But yeah, um, enough about that. Just uh, jam this deck if you want to have a good time because we certainly had a good time today. All right. Thank you very much for watching and joining me on this absolute blast of one. It turns out mind over matter really is where you need to be in life. All right. Remember to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you for watching and goodbye. If you'd like to support me in the channel, please check out my Patreon. It has a free guide to budget turbo depths as well as three tiers of support. A low cost one that enters you into my monthly raffle for a free donation deck on the channel. A mid tier subscription that gives you access to my detailed turbo depths guide that is updated every month as well as regular articles. And lastly, the higher tier gives you all of the above as well as a monthly donation deck for my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel this way, please check out the link in the description.